Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to our farm and our house in progress, Cornucopia Orchards. Today I'm working on getting started with some of the trim on the roof and I'm going to work the lower roof trim first on the side that is finished and I'm only doing that because it'll give me good practice and get me back into the swing of things of doing some metal work which I haven't done a whole lot of and not in a while. Hopefully over the next week we'll at least get a good chunk of this upper roof done and then we'll kind of work our way down with the lower roofs and then the siding. For now, this roof right here is what I'm going to be working on. And let me show you the first piece of trim we're going to work with. So we are doing a metal roof and what that means is we're going to be working with metal trim and then metal sheeting as well. We're doing a standing seam roof from Taylor Metals and we've worked with them before and just a great product. So we're excited to get started on that. All right, so first thing I'm gonna share with you. So it's gonna come with a protective wrap, at least every metal that I've ever gotten to work with does. And there's a complex profile here, you can see that. And that tape, this, this wrap is gonna protect that whole viewable surface. Now you can probably see this streaking here. Let me see if I can get that closer for you. You see that difference in shine pattern? So that, so I wanted to get that clean before I put some zip tape on. The installation instructions from Taylor specify that you should have your um, underlayment for your roof lap over top of the metal sheet, the drip edge that I'm about to install, but that also over the edge you should have underneath that. So you cut it and it sits on top, comes down kind of near near the, the edge. But underneath it also, there needs to be a nine inch strip of underlayment. And then you have your gutter and then the hook edge goes over top of that. And so it creates a, just a super <laughs> lap pattern. And we aren't using that kind of material here. So there's two ways that I could handle this. And um, one way you could do it, we're gonna be installing a, a roofing membrane. And that membrane is a workable surface, also from um, Huber. And we have rolls of it inside here. So I'm gonna be getting that up onto here. And we're going to put the first layer with a, a section that laps over the side um, by, I'll, I'll say, two or three inches is what we're going to do. So we'll secure it all down and then that one will kind of run back down and, and secure in. And then that is going to act as that layer for us. And then when we go to tape this drip edge, um, it will just tape on top of that membrane. Another way that you could do it and probably the way I'm going to choose to is I'm going to tape this now, install the drip edge and then that roll membrane, which is a second layer a additional membrane to the zip system and tape that's already on there, I will lap that over the top of the drip edge and that will that will be its its ceiling layer and will will not require an additional um, layer at that point. So that's my plan right now is we're gonna tape this with regular zip um, after lots of consideration. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a, a regular zip tape on and then put this um, trim piece on this strip edge and get it secured but not taped. And then when we go to put that membrane, it will it will cover over top of that and act as the final layer. Just getting this nice and tight and you know really rolled in is the biggest thing there. Um, until we see that done on a roof this flat, all of these lips any of these edges where there is the tiniest crease and i'm talking about anything bigger than that you're you will see the potential for some water infiltrating under the tape especially if you install in colder weather like we did for the entire top half of that half of the house which is not a slow a small slope and and for this lower roof and um when the sun came out and baked this in it it stopped leaking but we did have a couple of spots where i had to go back up and you know put an additional layer of tape on up there uh, moisture does have an impact whether the surface is truly dried any debris so you really gotta you know do a good job with this stuff to get it to give you the best results just same as anything else best prep gives you best results so one thing i'm going to do here is this is such a pronounced lip i don't know how i'm going to finish this out from the other side 
So I'm going to, for now, just go ahead and install this with this much extra to make sure I can capture, you know, bring this tip to tip somehow at the corners. And um, then that way, that way I'll have it there when I go to do this other run and I can figure out how I'm gonna cut that metal. So this is the second piece and I'm going to open this seam up a little bit and try and get it back to about three or four inches so that I can have this lap the previous sheet. fish aboard on the mini roof on the uphill side of the house and just one person I'm running from the two outsides towards the middle so this is the second board and I'm gonna go ahead and get this one butted up against the fascia on the walls that go that way on this side or did that side over there and then we'll get that nailed off it is gonna hit pretty much where I want it to on a joint um, and then I'll just fill in the middle with the board so that's that's the, <laughs> the easiest part to work with so you can see we're just butting it up against the outside one and I do have to take just a hair off of that corner over there to get that to raise up on that side. And then already got the fish on this other side here. So I went ahead and caulked the two seams that are in here, here and here, and just touched up the nail heads and anywhere where there was extra large knots, caulked over the, through into, you know, pushed what I could in and then sealed those up. And then this board here had a couple of spots on it where some kind of critter was in the board and got out after the board had already been painted. And I'd seen that there was one here, and then in the chunk of the board that I cut off, there was like four. There was a couple of smaller ones I didn't realize, so I went ahead and caulked over those as well. So now that this fascia is up, I just got to rip these sheets, and it, while it is a two-foot overhang, it's a little bit more, um, unfortunately, <laughs> and uh, just because of your vertical, it's a little bit more than two feet, and so, you know, I can't rip the sheets just in half and have it adequately cover this section of roof. Um, and so I'm gonna cut them in, you know, probably three pieces. And then the scraps, I don't know what I'll do with those yet because there'll be a, a fourth piece out of the eight foot length left over. Um, but let's get a measure on this. All right, let's see here. So we are sitting at 31. Yeah, we cut that 31. We're not gonna have it overlap over too much. And I already checked that down here. Let's check it one more time over here. It should all be the same, but you know how that goes, especially with us semi-professionals. Run that up to the wall, just on the straight. It looks like 31 should do it. And I'd like to finish this section out on the trim. And then I might think about getting this 
rolled out with the second layer of underlayment um, as the next next kind of thing to do um, before it gets to be in full direct sun. <laughs> So we're going to get the first layer of the underlayment number two. This is underlayment, but because of the slope of this roof, I also need an additional layer of underlayment. And so I just went ahead and decided to do um, ice and water barrier. In this particular case, the uh, zip system board and the zip system peel and stick underlayment. And um, we'll look at lap requirements and all that type of stuff. Um, so far, seems like a pretty good product. I like the thickness of it. It will help, um, you know, like make sure that uh, it's less likely for the screws securing the trim to pop up through um, and deform the metal above them, that kind of thing. So. Split liner. I am not seeing a split liner on this thing. Well, it's supposed to be a split liner, but um, there's no split. Okay, fair enough. Now that this is started, I think I'm going to actually roll this back up and then peel it and then lay it as I go. We are coming up over this hump here. And so when we hit that with the, you know, peeling this and laying it out, that may change how it sits. I'm not sure we'll, we'll do that first. And this is supposed to have a dual release liner. And I think that would make this a lot easier so that you could start peeling one, you know, and, and work it kind of back and forth. And I'm gonna run this pencil on the top so I can see where this should be. Just as a, a, a starting guide as I start to roll this out. Normally, when I do something I haven't done before, I take a minute and I call somebody who has, or I find a video online. The instructions were very straightforward and I thought, how hard can it be? Turns out if you don't know what you don't know, even something straightforward can quickly go from bad to worse. My mistake here, as it turns out, was working this solo, in the sun, and starting on a ridge. The ridge, as you can see, made my start go off track, and as I tried to correct, things just spiraled. As I kept trying to correct for where I was already having problems, this piece just got worse and worse until finally I just rolled it out as best I could and accepted that it was going to have some fish mouth. Think about this piggy bath. Mud. Yeah. So we're just looking at one of the things I love about this house is looking at those birds is I mean, that's right outside of our bedroom window. So we're going to have some great views of the forest. So I'm not proud of this job. I didn't get it figured out until right about there in that last section. And I would not do the 10 to 20 foot. They recommend you do 10 to 20 foot at a time. And if you got two people, maybe um, I would not do this in sun. I would, only, I would only do it in shade or if it's cold because it's just really hard to work with. Um, super hot as well up on the roof. Um, it just soaked in that heat and radiated it back out like a little oven. I would, I would honestly probably peel this all off and start over except this is the bottom course. And so while it looks nasty having these fish mouths here at the top, I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm just going to go right over top of it. You got to have your lap. So I will make sure to get that lapped and I'm going to call that good enough. We're in the morning and this is the top side of the house on the west side, which means we're under shade and I'm going to go ahead and try and get the next section of this rolled out. I'm going to keep this roll. I'm not going to cut it until we've lapped where we're going to lap 
and then hopefully keeping the remainder of the roll on and then just doing a little bit at a time, rolling and releasing the liner. Hopefully that will let me do a better job on the second time through. All right, here's second roll. Just open it up. I think this is where that liner is supposed to be, is right here. There is no no pull. So this this is the second roll, it has no, <laughs> no split release. So we're doing a horizontal lap. This is where the last roll got me. And you can see there's the previous roll and it goes to about where this tape is right here. There it is. You can see it's stuck to the bottom here. And the requirement is six and a half inches, I think, or six inches of the lap. And so what I do is I roll it and then I, I make sure that the release liner is still attached when you get to that point and roll it up onto the other. And then I can cut down that and uh, makes it a lot easier to get this to come off. And then you, then you get your lap when you're done. And I can fix all these wrinkles because that's just on the release liner. All right, so now that this whole roof is done and only parts of it look okay, really not that great, <laughs> great to be honest. You can see there's some missed lap there and obviously the fish mouth at the bottom. I think I've got this figured out. So I would roll it out, make sure that you've got your alignment where you want it. And in this case, because there's too much movement down here, I'm using along the wall as my alignment for this roll. And here's the complicator for me. I'm trying to lap up and over this um, hip beam ridge. And so every single one of these, I've had problems except for this one and this one. And this one, I don't know why it came out well, but it was off. You can see I had to s slice it and, you know, s and uh, join it in together to get it to come back more into alignment with where the rest of the roof was going. But what I found is that roll it out and then you know kind of get the first part started just right there at the front start that and then I, I I was just basically taking the split liner and then I was finding that if I was very careful I could grab it and peel it back you can see it peeling on the top side there too and obviously with both hands and then smoothing it every you know little bit and it was making sure there was no fish. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be up here. <laughs> yes, you're a little, little creature, aren't you? That makes sure that the split liner is, you know, or that the, that makes sure that the whole sheet is rolling out nicely. Now I can roll this back in. And in theory, it should go exactly where I want it. And that's going to be giving a good lap there at the end, maintaining the right spacing off the wall that we started. And then, um, you know, you're getting most of your overlap here too, where I had problems and tried to correct. So here's a detail I'll share with you. So I'm doing the second run through. These are the two little um, wings um, coming off the hip beams on this roof. And I'm running a cut down this ridge all the way to the corner. And I can use that on another corner piece. If you cut real soft, you can see I've scored that, but I haven't cut what's underneath at all, the existing material and so now I can just pull that up and cut it fully slight change in plans I actually really liked having this one just slide underneath and so that guy is going to lap over the crest this one laps on the underside before that and then that gives us a nice corner and a good directional there for any water channel on the bottom because otherwise I would have had to do some extra tape work on right there at the corner you can see that this one only goes to like right there and this, this lap would have mostly taken care of that, but not right there in the corner. All right, so we're lapping up to the wall on this end here. 
and these are non-vent, this whole stretch here. The top section will be vented, and so I'm gonna be treating that differently with this and with tape and with the flashing. But on these, I'm gonna go ahead and lap this up the wall, cut it here, go around the wall, tape down onto that, flash down onto that. I'm gonna make sure it's up against the wall. So attaching to the roof first and then the wall second. The whole way down. Nice and tight into that corner. There, you can hear that. Okay, and I'm gonna cut that where I can see it's gonna be joined at the wall, right here. bottom part first, no particular reason, just fold that over, and I actually managed, yeah that's good, give myself just a hair of extra, I might not bother to retape that, and then here, get that up the wall, avoid any fish mounts on the top or the side here if I can. I'll probably come back and roll this. Obviously a shingle style, this one over this one, over this one, over this one, as you go down. And um, uh, more or less what they say is that whatever your depth of snow, and our depth of snow is gonna be like this. So um, any amount would have worked and um, the metal flashing we're gonna put on here is gonna get taped back to the wall as well. So that is, I mean, it's overkill. So I finished off second roll. I had been hoping for more like one and three quarters of a roll, but the math of the overlap apparently um, a little bit too hard for my little brain. So let's see where we're at. So this section appears, the section that I was mentioning, that's going to be, um, this tape is going to get cut out. There's a gap along the wall, and that's going to be vented for this whole roof structure. The part where I'm standing is um, un unconditioned, but then right about here, 10 feet in, uh, yeah, about there, going all the way down and over is all conditioned. So that's going to be vented right there at the top. These sides won't be, and this is what I'm missing. Basically this little strip right here, and then over here on the far side, this little strip right here. I'm just going to tape this with a regular zip tape. Um, I just didn't pull this one quite far enough over the hill to match up when I was doing my laps. That's okay. I thought maybe I would you know, if I had this to do again, I would, I would end it shorter on all of these, just enough to where if you took one and rolled it down up the valley or something, or up the, the peak there, up the ridge. The roof on the other side, I changed the pitch to a 4 on 12, so it doesn't technically require the underlayment, so I'm just going to use it on that third roll, um, starting on the lower portion and then going upwards and see how far I get, and I'm not going to buy another one. I don't have to use it. It's not required by code for 4 on 12 and greater. Um, I think that obviously since I've got it anyway and I don't think I can return it, um, I will probably just go ahead and, you know, use what I have. So we're a couple of days in now here at the garden and I wanted to just check and see if there was anything coming up yet. And it looks like our kohlrabi are making an appearance. We have some volunteer squash from the last couple of years of, you know, this, this was soil that we fed um, the pigs into. Um, no Chinese mahogany yet. We've got some lettuce that's coming up. Very happy. Looks like we've got a few things here. Um, golden wax beans starting to come in. Not seeing spinach. Yeah, we can see some spinach. Let's see. A few spinach little bitty bits coming up there, and then another squash volunteer. Um, soup beans. There's at least one. A couple more of them down there. Don't see any. Yeah, lemon basil. You can see some tiny ones coming in. 
this, she doesn't have marked, and I'm not 100% sure what all is in these mounds. Don't see anything. Oh, yep, there's something coming up. Little ones right in there. And then we definitely do have pretty good, these are intended to be squash instead of just being volunteers, I guess. And another little update as well. Our pasturage, you can see a little green coming in up here. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button for more. See you next time.